Hi, is up everybody, I'm No Lux Given back with some more Fairy Tale Fables, back with a brand new month of ranked play for Fairy Tale Fables. And before we jump right into the game here, I actually want to talk about the rating reset because last month I climbed up to exactly 3,000 rating and then I stopped playing. I figured that would lock me in for 3,000 rating for the next season. But actually, you have to get at least to 3,001. So I just wanted to kind of correct that from my last video in case anyone else didn't realize. I was actually reset down to 2,000 this season, but I reached out to the devs, explained the misunderstanding, and they were nice enough to correct that for me. And that also just made me realize that even though I don't really play that much asynchronous, if you just let this sit at 1,000, it will decay back down to zero, I believe. Uh, there might not be resets below 1,000, so maybe this is a bad example, but if you were to get to 2,000, have it reset, or, or let's say 2001, have it reset to 2000 for a month, the next month it will auto reset down to 1000, so you're at least going to want to play one game where you get 7th place or higher in both synchronous and asynchronous and chaos and non-chaotic. So just wanted to kind of do that little public announcement and say thank you to the devs for Fairy Tale Fables for fixing that for me, because uh, that was my mistake. The uh, announcement was a little bit confusing, to be fair. Um, but but uh, also, I like kind of felt like maybe you had to get to 3001, and I should have trusted that hunch if, if you look at the very end of my previous video. But regardless, we're at 3,000, we locked it in, however we needed to do it, however we needed to worm and squirm. So we're at 3,000, and I actually don't know what the qualifying rating will be for this month's tournament. I know that there are going to be monthly tournaments. This one's going to happen, I believe, on April 27th and 28th, Friday, Saturday, towards the end of the month. I believe those dates are correct. Um, you know what, let me, let me load up Discord here and just double check a Rooney because there was just an announcement posted yesterday and we all know okay so it's it is the 27th and 28th that is a Saturday Sunday combo uh, so I believe that's a little bit different from this previous month which had Easter on a Sunday but honestly I'm not super sure and I don't trust my own memory at this point now we've got ugly duckling if you start a fight with at least one free space your characters have plus one plus one increase this by one for each level and every three turns choose a treasure one level lower than your level I like Guan Yin I think the ugly duckling is pretty cool with pirates specifically but pirates aren't really a tribe that I play super often so I think I'm just going to go for the every three turns a treasure strategy here. Have the ability to pick up a cat angel. I do think I'm going to go cat angel and roll. We could go for elementary insight on the lock-in, picking up apprentice owl plus elementary insight. We're not like super likely to find balls specifically, but the fact that we will have one additional treasure that is a level 3 treasure once we hit level 4 is somewhat worth playing for. I think I'll go for this. This is a good enough next turn that I think I am happy to lock that in. So, let's do it to it. Let's pedal to the metal and I'm sure with the, excuse me, with the cat we're doing just fine off the rip. 23 health. How in the, how in the world? What in the heck? How do you... I mean, I know they took a, a devil's deal, but um, that still seems like very, very low health. Um, a demon's deal. Demon's deal, rather. I don't think I'm going to use the demon's deal here since I will have four gold next turn anyways. If it was like demon's deal plus short sword or wooden sword, that or, or wooden shield, rather... Uh, I, I'm not exactly sure the names of the one-cost weapons, but if that were the case, I would consider locking, but... Tis not, so twon't. And this is a pretty big board. This is a pretty big board. We're going to take a little bit of damage there. And we still get the demon's deal. One thing I wanted to point out, Black Sheep, I just saw this on Discord, is an evil animal fluff. 
did not notice that, but the black sheep is a fluff and is a black sheep when up against the other fluff. So that's pretty cute. I think I will take the demon's deal because it is also plus one, plus one here. And then I get one more roll. Can't pick up another owl or an angel. Could pick up a sword squire. Let's roll. I'll just go for a smiling sprout, I think. Not super impressed with that. Maybe could have gone with the puppy that pumps attack. I was debating there at the last second, but either way, we're going to take some damage there. Down to 20, and this is what I was thinking. Plus one treasure choice. I do like the Merlin's Tower as well, but plus one treasure choice could be really good in ensuring that I hit the ball. It's kind of what I'm going for. If I did have the Meteor Ring or Blizzard Ring, whatever it's called in this game, I would have picked that up here. But I do think plus one treasure choice is probably better than Merlin's Tower. So let's grab that. And then I'm going to go for Acolyte plus the Smiling Sprout. Definitely not playing for power this turn. But I think that could be good for the future. I don't hate Knight's Oath and Determined Plowman. But I think I'm going to keep on rolling with it and see if we can make any pairs or triples, pick up some additional acolytes, kind of just like forcing Hatball for no real reason. But we'll see how it goes. And yeah, this goes not super great. Actually, a pretty close combat, though, despite all of that. Sweet oranges are very good. I also don't hate a pirate gunner and potentially a Determined Plowman. But I think I'm gonna go Pirate Gunner and roll. Throwing this into my hand for the Gunner. I will go for the Oranges, and then I'm gonna roll, and we have the opportunity to pick up an Apprentice Owl with plus one treasure choice. Or skipping, I will probably take a treasure with plus one choice and just take something with the word spell on it should that come around again actually no we just get cobbled roads and i think i'm just gonna go for playpen here i think just a, a little bit of additional stats is actually pretty good and then it will lock on to a smiling sprout triple plus a second acolyte i am gonna play down a character here so that i may uh get some pirate gunner stats i think that that is a route to go Oh, some stars doing me dirty there, unfortunately. But a really strong ranged character will allow me to make it through with a... I think that was a losing tie, but I cracked an egg. So not going to be too upset about that. Deal with the devil is actually really bad. Hmm, another shot at a tier 3 treasure is kind of cool. Hmm, this is a pretty long time to wait, but I think I am playing mages here. So let's go for Wishing Fountain so that we can just force mages. And then I'm going to pick up this Acolyte and I'm going to hope that I can roll into a two cost card. Maybe another Apprentice Owl. Oh, beautiful baby. Always call your shot. Always works. So I will pick that up and then I think I will backline this Smiling Sprout. And now try to scale up this owl. I think the Smiling Sprout is just too many stats not to play at this point. And I don't mind scaling up the owl. I think that's a fine card to keep in hand here. And ultimately, I think we're doing pretty good. We've got four mages on the board. And next turn, we're hoping to pick up the Seer's Sphere and some monster books. That's the plan. Let's see what we can make happen out of that really good sequence of attacks for us. And the Smiling Sprout will take it home with an actual tie. Not a winning or a losing tie, just a real old-fashioned tie. Wizard's Hat probably plays at this point, and I can probably cut the playpen. Yeah, let's do that. Not interested in that. We can take this. I don't hate trying my net here either. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't have to play a character down. I just don't love that then if I roll into a monster book, I guess I could sell off the cat and pick up the monster book. All right, I don't find it here anyways. Plus two, plus one on all of my characters permanently is probably a pretty good spell. So I think we will pick up the God Rays and then roll one more time and then lock onto a monster book. That seems good. So starting off next turn, I will probably cut the Pirate Gunner and the Cat Angel and just throw in Apprentice Owl and Monster Book and then cast some other spells in the interim. And hoping, I'm wishing, that this Wishing Fountain with four choices is going to give me the Seer's Sphere so that I can combo off like crazy and then continue to just get cool free treasures as the game goes on. It's certainly possible. Let's see if it will happen here for us. We do not crack the egg this time, so we're going to take six down to nine. So my health is now actually really low. And that is actually kind of spooky and something that I do have to be a little bit fearful of here. So Freshen Up will set us up for my next spell. Oh wait, no, I don't have that treasure. What am I saying? I just have one additional mana and my spells cost one less. So maybe I don't want this? Eh, it's a free plus one plus one for my whole team. Let's take it. And almost kind of need this. It's just, a, it's just a bunch of stats. Wouldn't mind another book mage, though it is a little bit tricky to field. Oh, and I also don't have the mana. So that's actually kind of a bummer. I think what we're going to do is try to weave in a muddy ocean crab. I'm a little bit afeard, though, to cut the spider. Spider's really good scam, and I don't know if I want to cut it. Mm. I think I will just maybe not play this backline Apprentice Owl and instead play a full ranged backline because I don't, uh, I'm too afraid to cut this spider right now. Maybe if I had a second monster book in, we could justify it, but that just seems a little bit too spooky for me. All right, we do get to take out their front line. Is that going to be enough? Yes, it will be. We get a losing tie. And then I do believe I get a tier three treasure here. And we do get the Seer's Sphere. So I'm going to pick that up. And now I think I start using New You on the level four character, the spider. Because I'm looking to cut that. Though maybe we cut the Ocean Crab and start to pile on with that. Yeah, that seems fine too. This is now a bunch of stats. I can probably play this thing instead here. And I think just casting spells is good. Uh, Ride of the Valkyrie, not good enough though. Let's throw in a roll and then I'm just gonna cast a few more spellies here. And I think this is a great way to finish off the turn. We're going to get a bonus XP, which won't... Oh, this actually is not when you level up. It's just every three turns. So I could have taken the deal with the demon or deal with the devil earlier. But I think ending off the turn with a bonus XP is a fine strategy. So this is a total of 3018 worth of stats. It's pretty comparable to the Smiling Sprout that we've scaled up up until this point. Could also do something like this. Yeah, I actually like that a lot too. Just pumping up both of my ranged characters and double book mage to continue to pump up. Hopefully this is good enough. I'm up against the lobby leader and it could all come crashing down right now. If it does, I do have a plan for how to make this video a little bit longer. A huge Apprentice Owl there from my opponent. Hopefully we can battle through that and not attack into it. Yeah, because now we lose the front line. But we do still have a pretty beefy back line. Not going to be enough. I take six down to three, though. I'm still alive. Still alive. Every two times you cast a spell, also cast two on other random characters. Or when you buy a spell which costs at most two gold, repeat it one time. We're going to go for that. 
and we are gonna replace E. And then we're gonna try to cast some spells. Grim's twist on Sir Galahad seems like it could be fine. This is so weird that it's heavy. I feel like that. Turn an evil character good. Yeah, I mean, just getting a little bit more health is probably fine. And then nice. We do get to make a tier 6 character here. Uh, not a good one, though. Not a great one. I think we'll go with like this for now. Looking for... Um, sorry, what am I... Oh, I was looking at my mana. So, yeah, I don't have that many more spells. I'm no longer getting sphere resets. That's still a bunch of stats. I think we scaled up pretty nicely this turn. I can only cast one more spell, but I will go for a free one. And then, okay, I guess I will make this my last spell, quote-unquote. We'll pick up a monster book. Probably not interested in replacing... Oh no, this is good enough to replace the wizard's hat, isn't it? And I get that mana immediately? And I will just fire that off to end the turn. All right. There we go. There's a lot going on at the very last second up against a dead Aladdin here. So probably not going to be a super big deal. Uh, this is draining, but it's not heavy. So that's why I did double cast the Ride of the Valkyries there. And we're looking strong. We are definitely looking big. I might like to pick up the Aeon character sooner rather than later. I think I go for free spells. I've got 11 starting mana. That's really good. Uh, healing Potion is heavy, but refunds the mana, so no reason not to. Definitely not casting a big old Drainer, though, at the start of my turn. We're going to roll right on past those. Uh, freshen up when we still have this much mana is probably fine. Again, ignore the Drainers. Here she is. Here's the Crystal Sage. How you doing, baby? Um, so this works, right? It just destroys... Destroy your first other character's items and buff a random item. Oh, but she needs an item in order for me to be able to cast that. All right, that's fine. Uh, could potentially cast it now. Is, is picking up an Acolyte good? I don't think I want to combine these, is the funny thing here. I do think I want to take a Sea Witch, though, as another monster. Oh, I don't have enough gold. Uh, we can sell off this and this. I'm just thinking, like, I think I want to go for the size potion here. So, because this, this is a double cast. That's huge. And I think I'm going to wind up picking up this Sea Witch next turn. But for now, not going to worry about it. And then I'll just finish off with a Draining... I was thinking I was just going to finish with Fireball, but I could just finish with God Rays. No, you know what? I like the I like the Econ. Let's finish off with a Fireball here. And that is a double-casted Fireball, so that's neat. And then I'm picking up Sea Witch next turn, and that's going to allow me to have, like, really, really cheap spells because I was not able to hold onto the hat in picking up the... Um, Sorry, just a really loud plane overhead. I'm not sure how loud that is for y'all, but I uh, was not able to pick up the hat and, or hold on to the hat in picking up the ravens. So just the ravens at this point. A fancy border here on Grim Reefer. I wonder what that means. Stealth actually kind of cool on a character that I really appreciate getting an attack. But I don't think it's necessary New you on King Arthur, probably fine, but I might want to just start stend sending Smiling Spout, Sprout up the chain. Sorry, I like got tongue twisted because I was thinking of other stuff in my head there. Uh, but yeah, now we've got a tier four character and then one more new you will make that a tier six character. We might be able to find another new you here. No, not quite, but we are definitely getting there. And I will say, I will definitely say not bad, for first game of the new season, eh? This one first. Oh, we're no longer getting refreshes here. All right, let's roll C. Oh, okay. 
No, I don't love it, but we can try to candy cane this or something. Because it's not doing too much for me now, but I'll love me some Crystal Sages. So we're going to pick up another Crystal Sage here. I'll get rid of King Arthur. I think we're done with him. And then I will pick up an Elementary Insight. Locking on to the third Crystal Sage. I'm tempted to throw in this one, but I think this one's going to be enough. And the idea that we can triple it is going to be enough as well. Oh, okay. So this is where your level does matter because... If we had picked up the drain, then we would not have, um, or if we had picked up that thing where you get nine gold, but don't get the XP, then we wouldn't have been able to pick up a tier three treasure from this hero power. We would have found another tier two treasure. So that would have actually been pretty terrible because we were ball hunting. Now we did find this off of our tier two treasure, in fact, so not a huge deal ultimately, but Looking good here, looking good, as uh, those starlight strikes are just absolutely massive there. We get a victory, and this is going to be a skip. Plus four cold is pretty insane for that little work. Let's pick up this Aeon. Tier five treasure. Have to imagine that's going to be a skip as well. Slays trigger an additional time. I don't think is actually just worth the five mana. I think five mana is really good. We've got so much cash starting off this turn right now. Gain their level as HP. I do like this. My HP is really, really low. I don't like that this is heavy, but I do like the idea of just gaining four health, potentially even gaining six health. I think I'm just going to gain four health with this, though. Uh, morph a lot, not super interested in that one. I think I'm rolling for better pastures here. Calling it. Oh yeah, that's real good. We're winning all these fights. It's potentially interesting. I'm already kind of low on energy and my ball's up. So I'm thinking about like multiplying a character's HP by two permanently. I think I'm into that. I'm not sure if I'm using that on Apprentice Owl though or on Crystal Sage, but I think it's Crystal Sage so that we can just not get scammed. No, I get first attack. Let's just go for most stats here then and then roll for... A big guy. No, I can do bigger. All right. I could not do bigger, but that's fine. Cersei's Cup. We're going to let that roll on by as I roll down into nothingness there. That might have been a good treasure or uh, a good item. I'm not sure. But honestly, I think that we're fine. We're up against a triple upgraded Court Wizard comp. Kind of, kind of silly. I wonder if... I wonder why their whole... I, get, think they, I guess they just tripled two of them and then they actually um, are just using the Philosopher's Stone for the remaining one. But either way, not going to be able to battle through the Apprentice Owl. That's going to move me into the finals. I thought this game was looking dicey. But we have diced it up here and we are now looking quite good. Uh, this is heavy, but um, I think worth it. Again, just... That HP is a little bit of a boon for me right now. I definitely don't need to be Guan Yin anymore. And then I think I'm just going to cast some spells. I think that's what we're doing here. We're casting spells. I'm prioritizing additional... Oh, this, this plays now, but I don't really need it. Um... Mm. I'm just thinking if I want to use this dramatic reveal. Yeah, sure. No, when you have exactly one mana and zero gold, uh, that's just never going to happen. Exactly one mana. No, that's so weird. Um, sure. We have a few good characters here, and we can make a few more characters good even. And I am rolling for the big scion of the storm. Core fusion would have been 
nasty here. Wow, it's potentially even worth locking onto because of the double caster. But we have so much gold. That's the first one of those that I have seen, unfortunately. If we find another one later on in the turn, after we've spent a little bit more mana, then I would consider that. We're losing all the free coins and dying breaths and cool items here, unfortunately, too. But we do get to pick up a Witch Queen and probably could have cut the Monster Book, too. I think that any cut there is probably fine enough. We're up against a Mage Finalist as well. I think my cards are a little bit bigger. We just have to race this Pirate Map. They do have two ranged characters in their backline to my two, and I guess backline characters are somewhat likely to get scammed. Wow, okay, well I'm glad we've been gaining health because we go down to four there. That is pretty spooky. And I think I'm gonna have to do this. I think I'm gonna have to not get myself scammed. I don't think Dragon's Fury is relevant. We're gonna have to beat my opponent a bunch of times here though. So that is a lot to contend with. Um, oh, it refunds the mana cost. Sure, no reason not to cast it then. It's a large ranged creature. Let's rummage. Pick up a little bit more health. <laughs> I will probably go with the Cersei's Cup. Oh, 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 we've got Core Fusion here. Okay, so Core Fusion doubled up onto Crystal Sage. Oh no, it's gonna, it's gonna, oh, I'm glad it warned me. Yeah, let's do it like this. Okay, so crazy big Aeon. Um, I actually have to find another character to put on this board. So I'd really like another Witch Queen. I'll take the Try My Net. I'm not gonna take the deal with the demon. Put the Slay card in an awkward spot, but it does have a bunch of stats, so it can probably hang on there just from all of these stats. And I felt like the Brave Little Trader was potentially a better deal than the Spider. I really don't think it matters too, too much. We do get the Slay there, and then just going to be a ranged battle, so we do lose this, unfortunately, and we die. I don't think that the decisions that I made in the last turn mattered too, too much. But honestly, I'm still pretty happy with a second place result to start off the season. And I think we just uh, took too much damage earlier on and uh, my, my back line did not have enough health. I was uh, scaling up these crystal or the crystal sage a lot with like any additional health spells that I found. Uh, but maybe monster book is better than I thought it was too because there's just a lot of really powerful endgame spells like that uh, Volcano one can just take out multiple cards for one monster book. Regardless, that's going to be it for me today. Pretty happy with this performance to kick off the season. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'm no Lex Given. Peace.